Welcome back, sports enthusiasts. In our last episode, we laid the groundwork on sports, and today, get set to plunge deeper into the vibrant realm of ball sports. This episode, we're focusing on tennis, Wang Qiu, as you saw in the textbook. Remember in the last episode we broke down the word ah. to hit? This time, we're all about Wang Qiu, tennis, and the characters Wang Net and Qiu, ball, that make it up. We already explained that the means hitting with your hand, right? So, we'll also explore other hand-driven ball sports and why they're called what they are in Chinese. Don't worry about memorizing all the characters in their names now, we'll get to those later. Just focus on getting the gist of these sport names for now. The character Wang Net looks like a fishing or hunting net, way back in Oracle Bone script. It's called a pictograph, because it literally pictures what it means. Later, to help with pronunciation, they added the character Wang dead, underneath. Think of it like saying Wang to sound out Wang. This type of character combo is called a phonosemantic compound. As Chinese characters got fancier, they added Mi thread to Wang to show that nets are woven with threads. So, when you write Wang, you start with Mi for the woven threads, then draw the net frame and lines, and finish with Wang for the sound. This'll help you remember how Wang is structured and written. Let's practice writing the strokes of Wang. Wang. Wu. Ang. 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 Wang. The simplified character Wang goes back to basics, dropping the pronunciation and material clues of Wang and me and leaving just the net frame and the two X's in the middle. Let's practice writing the strokes of the simplified form Wang. Wang. Wu. Ang. Wang. Wu. Ang. Wang. Wu. Ang. Wang. The character Qiu ball was originally used for jade, so its radical is Yu. The character on the right Qiu used to mean the sound of jade clinking together. Maybe because these jades were all round, Qiu later came to describe ball-shaped things, and eventually, sports balls in general. The Qiu in Qiu actually comes from an old character that looked like furry fur in Oracle Bone script? Maybe that fluffy roundness also helped shape the modern meaning of Qiu. When writing Qiu, start with Yu, radical for jade. Back in the day, people would string three jade pendants together on a rope and wear them as fancy accessories. When these jades bumped into each other, they'd make a nice sound. But if you were too rough, they break. The ancients used this to remind themselves to be chill and graceful. We already talked about this Yu radical when we covered the character Wan play. Now, put Yu together with Qiu furry fur, and you get Qiu, which describes round things and also stands for all kinds of sports balls. Cool, let's practice writing the strokes for Qiu. Qiu. Qi. You. Qiu. Qi. Yo Chiu Chi Yo Chiu Chi Yo Chiu Now for some ball sports with nets. Volleyball, tennis, table tennis, and badminton all have nets. But only tennis gets called Wang Chiu. That's because you use a racket to hit the ball in tennis, so in Chinese, it's all about Da Wang Chiu hitting tennis. Volleyball also has a net in the middle, but since Wang Chiu is already taken, they needed another name. Enter, Pai Chiu, Wali. This comes from the action of lifting the ball with your hand and sending it to the other side's defense area. Calling table tennis Zhuoshang Wang Chiu, literally, table net ball, would be cumbersome, so it's commonly shortened to Zhuo Chiu, table ball. Alternatively, the onomatopoeic Ping Pong Chiu, Ping Pong, captures the sound of the ball bouncing on the table. As for badminton, with its feathery balls, it simply gets called yu mao qiu, feather ball. All these hand-driven ball sports use the verb da, hit, for example, da pai qiu, play volleyball, da ping pong qiu, play ping pong, and da yu mao qiu, play badminton. Basketball in Chinese is simply lan qiu, basketball, since you dribble and hit the ball with your hands, so it's da lan qiu, play basketball, too. Baseball, the literal translation would be lei qiu, softball. But before Chinese folks knew about baseball, softball had already snagged that name. So, when baseball needed a Chinese name, Lei Qiu was out of the picture. Instead, they focused on the bat they used to hit and called it Bang Qiu, stick ball. Both softball and baseball use verbs da, like da, Lei Qiu, 
打棒球 ，croquet where you hit the ball with a mallet-like stick gets called tricio mallet ball pretty straightforward. Polo, another stick in hand sport but played on horseback, is called matio, horse ball. Makes sense, right? Snooker, where you score by hitting balls into pockets on a table, translates to drongtio, collide ball, in Chinese, emphasizing the collide action. American football, with its olive shaped ball, gets called ganlantio, olive ball, even though you don't hit it with your hands much. But since you often hold and pass it with your hands, it still gets the common ball sport verb da and becomes da ganlantio, play olive ball. Soccer, where you mostly use your feet, gets called zutio, football, in Chinese, which is super accurate. But since you use your feet, the verb can't be da; it becomes ti, kick. So you ti zutio, play soccer. Golf, maybe because it came to Chinese-speaking regions later, doesn't have a fancy name. It's just the direct translation of its English pronunciation, gao er futio, golf ball. And guess what? You play golf. 打高尔夫球 Two. In English, all these ball sports use the one verb play. But in Chinese, except for soccer, we use da for most of them. So you'll hear things like 打橄榄球，打篮球，打排球，打羽毛球，打网球，打垒球，打棒球，打撞球。打乒乓球，打高尔夫球，打槌球 ，and even 打马球。Play all sorts of ball sports. So, which ball sport is your ultimate jam? Don't worry if you don't recognize all the characters in their names yet. We'll dive deeper into those later. For now, just chill and get the hang of how these ball sports got their Chinese names. That's a win in itself. This episode was all about mastering tennis and getting a sneak peek into other ball sports, seeing how cultural influences shape their names. We hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Or leave a comment below and tell us about your favorite ball sport. Your learning feedback fuels our teaching passion. We can't wait to see you in the next episode.